Hello everyone. How's it going? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try Endless Space 2 today. I have not played it much since the early release of the game months and months ago, and I know some things have changed since then. So let's jump into the game real quick, and I'm gonna let you choose who we are going to be. Let me know if the audio is too loud or not. Um, there we go. I want to do. Where's the? We will Here we go. Permit the fires to All right. So my... the options I'm going to allow. Hold on. Let me get this in chat. Alright, so we got um, tree people, which these are the tree people. Uh, clone people, which is Come. this dude who clones Let's himself to make an entire gas. species of himself, because I don't know. He's weird. Um, these would be the robot people. These are the evil swarm people. And I think that's all I put up there? Oh, yeah, and then human people. So I don't really care about the Vadiani. I already played the Lumeris, and I don't really care about the Sophie. Why not join the smart guys? To the whispers of the heart. I had a feeling, yeah, the tree people were going to win, and I think they're going to win. All right, so we will play the tree people. Thank you for the votes. The least amount of love was for the clone people. Oh, Horatio gets no love. All right. Well, let's jump back into the game, and we will be the Unfallen. I actually did a little test game with them because I assumed this would be the faction that people would want to play, and I guess they are Zerg-like in that they need to expand by their uh, using their creep, which is giant branches in space that connect star systems together, which is interesting. Um, they seem to be a uh, like a diplomatic race because they are pacifists. They have these cool guardians that give them some cool bonuses. And they get bonuses um, per friendly faction that we're with. And I think there's like alliances and stuff. Anyway, so yeah, we'll do the Unfallen Select. We'll leave this the same. We'll just leave this kind of all standard, I think, for right now. Let's just go. Uh, I plan on just playing this game today, yeah. Oh, uh, Lexus. It's time to sing with all the colors of the wind. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, don't you mean to, to paint, Malinor? Can't you paint with all the colors of the wind? Ignorant of other worlds, of other races, we slumbered for ages. We were even ignorant of ourselves. For we knew fire as rebirth. Renewal, life, not as death, from above as from below. The carnage of the flames terrified us, but the heart soothed us, and we thought long about what we must do. For this new fire also awoke things inside us. Talents, truths, and a desire to heal the galaxy. Everything begins with fire. But we will not let everything end with fire. Yeah, that's a cool opening. An eternity of peace has been shattered by the arrival of violent alien species upon the world of Koyasil. The people called the Unfallen have been shocked out of their ages of slumber, and their treasured ideals of harmony and unity are being challenged. You are the voice of this contemplative and powerful people. Now that your curiosity and fear has been awakened. You must leave the whispers of the world heart. Venture into the galaxy and impose harmony upon the stars. Everything begins with fire, but you cannot let it end with fire. 
You can't let it in with fire, people. All right. Um, the unfallen are an ancient arboreal species whose long peace has been shattered by the conflict of other homeworld whispers from the heart entice them to spread a peace among the stars. So let's try to play, play a peaceful game where apparently, according to chat, the AI does not respect diplomacy. So this should go great. See the wispy brown line? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just gonna... Okay, so these wispy brown lines are our branches that we need to connect all of our star systems to. I'm gonna lower the sound a little bit more. It sounds pretty loud. Maybe it's mostly the music. It's great music, but it's a little overbearing for streaming. Um, all right, so the way that this works is we have these things called vine ships. We send them out to different clusters here, and then we can attract the branches through space, through these space lanes, connect other systems to our own, and then we can colonize colonizable planets in those systems. That's how that works. Um, we have a ship here. This is our scout. Let's just start scouting. We'll send him off. Okay. And these aren't really scouts, but I'm just going to use our vine ship as a scout as well to try and find a suitable system nearby to try and vine up. Uh, let's go into the galaxy view. It's a lot here, but it's kind of easy. As your population grows and you can colonize more planets within your system, it's easy to just kind of transfer populations from planet to planet within systems. Uh, up here is everything that this planet is currently generating. We have the um, climates. What type of world is it? If it has any special qualities that we need to research or that are here. For example, these guys get this special guardian on their home planet. And the guardian... What does the guardian do? I forget. All right, the Guardian grants additional damage done to attackers during ground battles, just this giant tree, and then gives plus five approval to this system, I believe, which we're currently sitting at a 68% approval. Higher approval rate means more... Uh, what does the approval rate affect? Is it food, industry, and science? Are those three that it affects, I think? I may be wrong about that, but having a very high approval is a really good thing. Uh, down here, we have the whole <laughs> political system, which honestly, I don't dive into too much, but it's there. There's different political parties that fight for control as you do different actions. Um, like war actions would get a rise in the war political party. And it's it all is to go into this like Senate screen. And then the Senate screen, depending on who is in power, which party, it dictates the type of laws you can pass. Laws would be bonuses and potential negatives? I don't know if there's any negatives. Yeah, yeah. So maybe bonuses and negatives that you can apply you know, to your entire empire. And it's it's a whole thing that is it's cool, but I don't really care too much about, honestly. But we'll meddle around with that at some point. Um, but for right now, we need to build something in this system. So you don't build things like on each planet. You build everything system-wide, except for specializations, which we can unlock later through technology, and then you can specialize a planet to do a specific thing, depending on whatever tech that is. But yeah, so when we're building a building here, it is affecting the whole system, not just a particular planet. All right, and one of the big things about our race is that they generate more uh, food, so we can grow faster, which is cool, I guess. All right, plus five food, plus five industry, so we can build faster. That seems like a good thing just to start off with, so we'll do that. Five turns, and that's kind of... Oh, research. So yeah, the research tree, I understand, has changed a little bit now. Um, still kind of wrapping my mind around this one. So I think as we progress up a particular tree, we unlock, like, passive trait bonuses? I think as well? I'm not entirely sure, actually. Um... These are the two traits or two texts that we start because of our race. So we have, oh boy, what do we have here? This grants infinite supermarkets, a building that we can make. Also, we can do a treaty through diplomacy. This is another improvement. Can only be built once per empire. So that's something we need to build where, I don't know, we need food, I guess. And then sustainable farms, which is something that we can build in every system. We also have these things unlocked. Okay. Wonder. So I'm guessing if we research these 
four techs in tier two, we can then build a wonder. Which requires resources that we don't currently have access to quite yet. Um, I'm just going to go with the suggested here, and we'll just do Xenobiology, which is going to give us some more research buildings. That's probably good, right? I don't know. We'll just kind of go with the flow. Why not? There's a lot to this game. Oh, right, and also we have a hero, by the way. There are heroes in this game that we can assign to fleets or as governors of systems. I'm going to assign this dude to a system. We only have one system, so we're going to assign you to there. And then as time progresses, he is, or it, is going to level up, and it has its own um, level up tree, like over here. Three different branches that we can go down, each doing its own type of thing, which we'll get into later as they level up. Also, if you sign them to a fleet, this is going to be the ship that you can customize whenever you unlock higher amounts of tech. I think that's all we need to do for the first turn. There's still a lot of stuff here, but we'll eventually get into all of it. I don't want to talk for an hour just on the first turn. Am I able to build something like a Death Star late game? Honestly, I don't know if a Death Star type weapon has been added to this game or not. I have not played a full game of this since like seven months ago. Uh, so we'll click this button to move our fleets before we end our turn. There we go. We found a black hole, which if this goes into our influence, it can provide plus 50 research on this system. On this specific system. Um, but there's nothing else to colonize here? Maybe we can build like a star base or something that can take a, that effect? Not entirely sure. And then over here we have the Gemini system, which apparently has a potato as a luxury deposit. But it looks like um, there's nothing that we can colonize here though. So if these dots were filled in, that means we have a planet that we could colonize. If they're not filled in, that means we can't colonize them yet. Uh, but there are texts in this game that you'll eventually research so you can, like, colonize every single planet. We found a black hole! We must extend our influence over it. Okay. Uh, we're just going to continue to scout here. Music is really good. And I think after this, I may build another vine ship. Because the more vine ships you have, the faster you can spread your creep or your trees. Or whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to open this in the screen right now, there, tutorial. Alright, actually, maybe I will. Hold on. That, usually, that probably means we have enough to pass a new law. We do. Okay. Okay, so, plus three dust, which is the money in this game, per person on planets, but we get minus one approval per person on systems. Interesting. Higher capacity. Uh, this is, I think, the icon for manpower, which manpower is used to um, crew your ships and also your military for, like, defensive and offensive strategies. Hmm. Plus 20 approval, but less research. And then these things with special icons, we can use these because of the political parties that are currently in uh, power. We don't really have any luxury resources right now. Plus 20% food per anomaly on colonized planets. That's also something that we don't really have much of right now. Let's just do toys for boys. Let's get approval on systems. We'll get minus 10% research on systems. It's fine. We'll pass that. So now, so let's exit the screen. Our home system goes from a 68% approval up to a 94, and we are now ecstatic um, because of that law that was passed. And you can see we're getting plus 19 food from ecstatic. I guess that doesn't affect in industry at all. How did it affect an industry? Maybe it's only food. Oh, it also affects um, influence. Okay. Influence is used a lot in diplomacy and law passing and stuff like that. Interesting. Alright, so let's keep scouting. It's like in this legend in space. Yeah! I typically like the legend more than in the space, though. Let's move our ships. Uh, thank you for the follows. So we have another system that we currently do not have the tech to live there. So we keep going. Same thing here, but we got more super spuds, which is great. 
And it looks like this is the end of the road, although there is a power right here. But we don't have a space lane connecting to them quite yet. Alright, so we're going to send the, this one back down here. Back down here. There we go. And keep going. What the hell? Solo quest. Uh, this is going to be some just like background fluff if you want to... Well, I guess you can't read that on stream because I'm not going to sit here and let you read it, but... If you watch this on YouTube, you can. Alright, but anyway, choose an objective. Possess two anomalies in your empire. Colonize four new star systems using the Unfallen Tendrils, our creep, and we would get 60 Super Spuds. I don't know what the Super Spuds do. Each luxury resource typically does something different, I think? Or we get a random tech if we get two anomalies. Let's grow! That's our objective, we're gonna grow. And we're gonna grow and we're gonna get potatoes. I love potatoes. What in the hell? There we go. There we go! Okay, so now we have a system with two colonizable planets in Tikal. We have a small monsoon with these things called curiosities, which... Oh, it has a guardian. Which means we have to research these things first to unlock them. Uh, we also have this tiny boreal planet with a curiosity and an anomaly. Shit. That's one of the two anomalies we may have needed if I chose the other one. Um, plus two food per person working. Okay. Well, that seems like good. Alright, so now we want to get the Tendril ship, which is way out here. And we wanted to get it over here. And the scout will continue scouting. Now we have four people in the system, which is good. Move ships. How fast can we build a vine? We found a minor race, the remnants. Pragma uh, pragmatists. Faction trait minus 35% improvement destruction on systems? What? Improvement destruction minus 30. I don't know what that does. But we can start negotiations with them and we can use some of the influence that we have been accumulating and we are going to say, hey, you know what? We like you little robots. I think these are like assassins. Yeah, so this was an order of assassins that were created by the Endless, which is like the uber race of this game that is, you know, it's been gone for a millennia. Um, and these guys have slowly been coming together and then they're forming their own little minor faction or the remnant. So we're going to be like, hey, we like you. And so for 10 turns, we're now going to be praising them, getting a slight diplomatic uh, boost here and there. And eventually, we can assimilate them when we get that up high enough. Or we can just declare war and take them out by force. But hey, we're peaceful trees, so why not be peaceful? Uh, where the hell are they, anyway? They're over here, right next door. They have Transvines, a luxury deposit, in their system, which sounds kind of cool. Thanks for the follows. All right. So that was that. Okay. And what else happened? Right. We're going to check vine ships. How long does it take to build one? Seven turns. That's kind of a long time. I think I'd rather pump out this uh, cerebral reality, granting us 10 dust and 10 science on the system first, because that's just three turns. Actually, do we have anything else I can do more industry to? No. So we'll do that. And then we will go. Oh, I didn't do the pray thing? What? Yeah, it has a little uh, symbol right here. So this is showing that we have approval ratings going up. That's what this little uh, thumbs up icon means. But I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, praise for nine more turns. And you see it's slowly getting up there. And as we get closer and closer to super friendly, this faction will eventually give us bonuses, just like passive bonuses because they like us. Which is also pretty cool. All right, and that is the end of this star lane here. So now we're going to send the scout up to... Wow, actually... How do we get out of our own little... It must be this way. Because you can see the star... Now, you can actually travel off star lanes, but that's a technology you need to research to do that specifically. Um, 
Alright, let's just end turn. And right now, the is to get this vine ship over here so we can get our creepy little tendrils into it. Alright, Xenobiology is now done. So now we can build some more stuff. We can also colonize tundra planets. I'm not sure if we have any tundra nearby, but we'll find out here very soon. Uh, let's go with... Like, this is good if we had the Hyperion research, uh, resource nearby, but I'm not seeing that, because I think that's supposed to... Oh, wait, wait, no, no, it's right there. We do have one nearby. Is that on a planet that we can actually... Oh, God, I, I went in too close. Each time you go into a system for the first time, it does this little passing thing. It's cool. All right, so one of our colonizable planets does have the Hyperion resource on it. So that is going to lead me to go over here and research plasma metallurgy. So unlike... Endless Legend, where you have to actually build the mines on the resources. I believe just researching the tech, as long as this resource is on the planet and you have the tech that can ex uh, exploit it, you automatically get it. And I don't think you have to actually build a mine in, the, in these games. So we're going to grab that because we are planning on getting this soon. Um, I don't think we have any titanium nearby, though. Again, that would be a symbol like above the system. Oh, no, no, we, we do. But that's in this their faction or their system. Now let's just do this real quick. All right. So it is an inhospitable planet that actually contains titanium. All right. That's fine. Move ships. In turn. Let's try and speed through this early game here. Academy discovered. Oh, shit. Okay, so the Academy is one of the ways you can recruit more heroes to your cause. It's either that or you have to research a tech to build like a little minor Academy in your empire. But someone already found the Academy. And as long as the Academy is within their influence, I think they have control over it so they can get more heroes. And heroes are very powerful in these games. So that kind of sucks that someone else found it. A uh, deed creator of the wealth failed. Oh, somebody got 100 dust in a single star system before us. I guess that's a legendary deed. Okay, well, thanks for telling me that we didn't Welcome do that. To the what up, Siphonity? Who doubt your intellectual chops. Please, prove them wrong. Listen, let me tell you something. Can we go into diplomacy with you? Yeah? Hey, man, what about well? peace? How do you feel about that? They feel slightly happy. I'm going to send this to make an offer. And it does cost us influence to do it, which sucks, but... We're peaceful. We're, we're a giant tree. Also, our hero leveled up. So let's go into assign skills. And since this hero is a governor, I want to level up governor-specific traits like this. Plus 10% food on system if assigned as a governor. Seems pretty good. But our faction already gets a ton of food already. So that may not be my priority, because we already have a ton of food. Um, plus 20 per no, just plus 20, a flat 20 on system, which is good, I think, in the early game. What else do we got? Plus one industry per person and food per person on planets. I'm going to get the flat bonus of plus 20. Because I don't think our research is that high, especially with the law that I passed. And there we go, now we're up to... Or maybe this isn't taken into effect their trait yet. Because it should pop up here. So probably, I guess, next turn it should... Should take that into effect? Alright, move... Move stuff. There's the Sophons... Thing. Tendril ship is almost in range to start doing the thingamabob. Okay. In turn. And now we're building a second ship to try and speed up that process. Because that's the only way that we can expand. The power of the academy has reached level 2. Heroes start at this level when recruited. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you're making something of yourselves. Um, okay, we're cordial. We're at peace. They accepted our peace treaty. So now, we can also go back in here and be like, Dude. Hey, do you want a map share? Thank you for the follow. Oh, thank you for the host. Sorry, I thank you for those. They are cool with that. Okay. 
Um, so they have access to titanium, which we don't need quite yet, but we could ask for trade later. Oh, wait, wait. I want equal map sharing. Okay. I guess they're cool with that, too. Let's just make it slow. Uh, but what up, everybody? Hello, Rose. Hello, everyone. And there we go. They accept it, because now we have discovered the home planet of the Sofans. They evolved on Hakim, a rocky world orbiting a blue star. As the sun produced relatively high radiation, the rate of mutation and evolution was unusually rapid. Though their world is cold, numerous volcanic fissures and vents created networks. Yeah, so this is cool. It gives you a little backstory on their home planet. And also because of their map sharing, we found these people. Which we could start negotiations with. Hmm. How about first contact? Alright. We only have 13 influence left, so... We can't do anything more? A smart decision. We figured you were up to it. Where are they at? They're over here? So even though they're way over here, I believe we can still get, like, passive bonuses from them if we make them like us enough. Oh shit, they are, like, right there. Okay. Alright, so now that the Vine ship is finally in system, we click on it, and then we do spread the beacon. And then eventually, as the turns progress, it should be, I think, 10? Yeah, and that will be cut down if we had multiple Vine ships. So you'll see, like, these little brown vines kind of slowly going to Tikal, which at that point we can then colonize, because we're trees. We gained a population. Excellent. Enter. Thanks for the follow. Eee. Not many uh, colonizable planets around us, are there? So, it looks like this is the end of the road? There's no other star lanes? Oh boy. And we only have these, I guess, three planets that we can colonize. That's not bad, but... Alright, let's start exploring past the Sofans. Coolio. Okay. So we completed that. What did that unlock for us? We can do some dust stuff. So some money. Technology. This will grant colonization of ash planets. Um, let's see. Do we have any ash planets nearby? Lava desert arid. Is there a way that we can just see? That type of stuff? Because that would influence my decision if we have an ash planet within range. We have a couple lavas, a couple arids. Have, oh, here we go. We have two ashes right here. So we could actually colonize these guys. If we grab atmospheric filtration. I kind of want to spread as quick as possible. This, how many turns is it going to take? Five? Okay. Yeah, we're going to grab this, and then we're going to send our vine ships up to the Gemini system, which is, you know, next door, so that's not too bad. And this is also good because it's going to cut the Sofans off from colonizing south, which is something we obviously don't want. Ah, now we have a bunch of more influence. Okay, so let's go back to these guys. And we'd be like, hey, 24-7 praise it. There you go. You're praised. And we still have three turns left on this one before we have to repraise them. Move our ships. And you can see the tendrils slowly going down the star lanes. Did you imagine? You're just flying in space, you know, casual Saturday morning as you do. You're on your way to get a cup of coffee out in the middle of the space lanes. And then you just see like, like, like hundreds of giant tree branches in space. Like, what? 
Um, so another reason, also, I didn't mention it, but why we want to try and have as high of an approval rating on all of our systems as possible with this whole ecstatic thing is so that we can get more influence from it because we're going to be so diplomatic and every single diplomatic action costs influence. Every single law pass costs influence. And I think there's some other things I'm missing. So this is going to be a huge um, thing for us. Oh, wait, what was... Um, do they still have... I don't see it here. But they used to be the like passive buffs you can apply on your empire. Did they take that out of the final build? It would come around like every you know two months or so. Then you can put your influence into like, hey, your entire empire generates twenty percent more dust for this amount of turns. Is that still in this game? Uh, thanks for the follow. Anyway, let's move our ships and in turn. Yeah, casual th stroll through space. Don't you take casual strolls through space? I do it all the time. Like, all the time. Okay, second vine ship is now up. This is focused on planets that have strategic deposits on them, which would be like the uh, Hi Hyperium and Titanium, which we don't really have much of yet. Well, we have nothing in this system. But it does also generate more industry as well, just based on our population. Oh, right, so those Guardians, which are an actual population on our planet, we can actually sacrifice the Guardian to get a slight approval buff for 10 turns, which seems very mean. Uh, let's see, plus 10 research on system per fertile, per planet, and per temperate. So that this one thing is going to give us plus 30 research because this one planet fills the temperate, fertile, and it is a planet. This is, this is factually a planet, so this is going to be plus 30. We're going to grab that. I find it really weird that the plus 20 science from our leader isn't actually shown here. Oh, wait, wait, is this guy... Is it Blue Sky Speculator? Is that the name of the actual ability? Ah, okay. I was looking for it to say from Hero. It's saying exactly from its actual trait. Oh, okay. Okay, so it was there. Got it. All right, um, what else do we need? We got one more turn on this? Yeah, we got one more turn on them. Move our ships. We're gonna have this fine ship start a tendril spreading. Actually, hold on, we need to create a fleet because right now it's in like dry dock. So there we go, fleet's been created. We're gonna move it up here. We could combine the, the vine ships, but this one's already, you know, like almost halfway there. So I'm going to start working on the Gemini system because we are researching this, which will be done. At that point, we can colonize the ash planets in the Gemini system. It is the Gemini system, right? Yes, it is. Great. So that's good. Our hero. Oh, our hero leveled up again. Oh, shit. Well, let's do this. Let's put plus 40 on system. I didn't even notice that when I was in here before. Okay. Enter. So next turn we need to repraise. And there we go, we can now colonize Ash Planets, which is great. So what else should our focus be? We don't necessarily need dust. Oops, we need dust right now. We have military. Um Impervious Bunkers, which gives us more like defensive capabilities. Chain Gang Program, a resource improvement. Thank you for the follow. Converts one population into 300 manpower. Oh, I see. No, that doesn't sound cool either. Uh, big Data Shipyards, a system improvement, which gives us more XP on ships, and a support module. I think support modules carry more manpower for like planetary invasions, I think. I don't know if I want that either. What does it suggest here? Adaptive bureaucracies. Plus 10 approval on this building. Plus 5 influence. And then plus 2... I don't know what that is. I don't know what the multicolor... I'm assuming that's plus 2 of every single resource in the game per person on planets. I'm assuming what that's what that means. That seems pretty good, but we can only make it once. But also it unlocks colonize of Baron. We'll grab it. Do we have any Baron? Ooh, there's apparently Ash Planets in the Janus system, too. Oh, kick ass. Like, all of a sudden, we have so many more options. 
Do we have any barons? I think we had like one up here. Oh no, that was Arid that I was thinking of. But still, we have a lot more, a lot more planets now that we can grab. Vine ship is almost there, you're off scouting. In turn. What else can you be besides tree people in this game? Uh, you can be clone people, an uh, entire race of a single cloned being. You can be like a swarm faction that likes to kill and take over everything. You can be a faction of robots that are like enlightened. Uh, you can be humans. You can be traders who focus on dust, which is the like gold in this game. Um, there's the scientific people, which is actually our friends right up here. Oh, I forgot to re-up our approval. Shit. Repraise. Be praised, friends. Be praised. Very good. Let's check on the other one that we're trying to influence. We have six more turns on them. Uh, we can check in on the Sophons too, I guess. Yeah, dude. Not much we can do. We could give them manpower. Effects within a system development upgrade four industry per person on planets. Oh, shit. That looks good. Uh, what do you want? Yeah, they, they don't like... How, what would you want for this? Are the clone people hot? Not really. They would want... All of our dust. For 25 of this. That's okay. Because this seems pretty powerful, and I think these last for like 10 or 20 turns. I think. I'm not really using dust right now. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's, let's do it. A smart decision. We figured you were up to it. Okay, so now, if I remember correctly, we should be able to go into... Uh, what screen is it? What? Economy screen. Uh, how do we activate that? Before, you can just click this button, and then choose the system you want it to be applied to. You can use it to upgrade your systems in the economy screen. Okay, I feel like this has been changed since the last time I played this. Manage trade companies, get access to the marketplace, and elaborate your system development once you've researched the right technology. Okay... So we can't level up star systems. We have to unlock economy and trade technology stage three. So we have to be up here before we can do that. It's still fine. We did use all of our dust, but that's okay. We still have this resource waiting for us when we can actually use it. I didn't realize that was changed, but it apparently was. That's okay. It's fine. I was like, hey, how much money do you want for this piece of shit car that I'm never going to use? They're like, all of your money. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. That sounds good. Oh, right. So let's start spreading. So now our tendrils will be spreading. I think we have, what, like two turns on this one left? Three turns. We have three turns. And let's go. In turn. Okay. In turn. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, we do not really need the infinite supermarkets. Our approval rating is already through the roof. We can't do any more spreading, so there's really no point in making any more food. 
Can we focus this on industry? Oh, I see. That just... Okay. Is there a way to, like... Change what your people work on? Wasn't that a thing in these games? Maybe not? Huh. Alright, well, we might as well just build this, I guess. It'll give us some more industry. Not much, but it'll give us something, I guess. We can almost spread! We're gonna colonize to all those planets. It's gonna be beautiful. Now, let's have you keep exploring. Thank you for the follow. Oh, you're right. I do have a colonizable planet in my homeworld. Um, there we go. I missed that. Thank you. I was so focused looking on the outside that I failed to look in. It's pretty deep, right? Did my turn not end yet? Move your people over to the other planet in the system. Can I do that if it's not colonized yet? No, I can't do that yet. You have to wait for it to be colonized in three turns. As far as I know. They do, yes. The Endless games do look and sound amazing. Their soundtracks are always so good. They're so good. Oh, this is actually perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is also in the economy and trade. So this is one step closer to unlocking the upgrading of systems. So yeah, sure, why not? Let's grab it. Uh, okay, so we've got two turns on that. This is done? This is done. Okay, so now we can start colonizing this planet. Or this system. We'll start with the one that has Hyperium. Then we get this cool little screen. There we are, that's us! That's us, giant trees in this little small ship. Way over there, you can't see us right now, but eventually we'll spread around. Okay. So I think most other factions need to send out colony ships, they need to build outposts, which then eventually expand into a colony, but that's just one of the things about the tree people. As long as you get your trees in the system, you're like, boom, colony, instant. But the downside is though, um, say we spread our colonies, like, way out here to the Javana system, and then an Empire enemy fleet came in and, like, attacked Tikal or attacked Gemini and took it over and destroyed our vines, everything on the other side of those vines is gone. I think, like, you instantly lose your colonies, it's all gone. Um, so it's a real... It's cool, but it's also, you need to be really careful about where you're spreading, because you can cut off your entire people. From what I understand in the faction... Um, explanation that I read. Alright, so now we want to colonize the other planets. So we're going to queue those up. There you go. And that has two more turns. What about approvals? We got nine turns left on that. Three turns left on that. Okay. Move. So we could colonize the Giovanna system, but the problem is I doubt we can spread tendrils in here unless we were like allies. I think you maybe you can then. I think. We have entwined to call. So now this vine ship is free to come over here and assist in actually. Oh, I didn't know. Do we travel faster on the vines too? I guess that would make sense if that's the case. I didn't know that if we did. And then I guess after we get this, we'll just put both fine ships down here in the Janna system, expand that way, and then go from there. We've, we discovered an asteroid field. Way down here. But we can't get there. At least not yet. Soon. Hopefully soon. And now that we colonized the planet with Hyperion, you can see that this is now kind of filled in. And so now we are generating plus three per turn. So that's cool. That's in turn. Ah, election times! The political party stuff. So, we get to choose who we want to support. It's currently showing, I think, what it is going to vote. Yeah, so, so 
there's a 17% chance or 17% of our population will vote for ecologists, 81 for pacifists, looks like. So I'm going to support the pacifists. You have my official support. And what this does, the stronger a certain political party gets over time, over uh, multiple elections, the stronger laws that uh, political party can pass. So I think you kind of want to make sure that your actions in the game, because every single action, technology or research, like everything, is going to be influencing the political parties in the system. So you want to kind of focus, like that's why I'm doing all pacifists. We're, we're praising the small races, we're trying to get in good with the big races, because we want to keep the pacifist political party strong. And uh, they currently are maintaining a very strong support, as you can see right here. That's the pacifist icon. So this is the voting, and then boom, we we are now a stronger party. We are established. Unfortunately, they're not strong enough to actually get access to any of the new laws, but hopefully down the line, as long as pacifists still remain strong, we'll eventually get to those better laws. And again, it's not really a system that I've paid too much attention to. Hey, we're now cordial! With uh, the assassin bots. And we're cordial with these guys. Hey, how's it going? And you're making something of yourselves. They're praising us, I guess. Alright, so now that we are cordial, these people are giving us some dust, some more manpower, and again, that's to crew our spacecraft and um, our military. And they're also giving us more science, which is awesome. And then the other people more dust, more manpower, more science. Okay. This is all good. See, it, it pays to be kind. It pays to be kind, friends. Uh, thank you for the follow. Okay. Move ships. One more turn until that's colonized. Then we can kind of move people around and as we need to. I think that's it. We have no military to speak of. That's fine. Who would attack us? Like, nobody would attack us. Okay, so now we can build this, which is good. We can now get titanium whenever we get a planet with titanium. And we kind of want to focus on economy and trade. What is this? Plus 25 dust per system level. Uh, so we're system level 1 right now, but we are trying to get towards the process of upgrading systems. And then we get more dust per person. And then all this also allows us to buy out, I think, buildings and ships that we're making with dust. Hmm... This unlocks an actual specialization for influence. If we build... Oh, shit. That's also good. I don't care too much about the military stuff quite yet. Thank you for the follow. Applies happiness program. And also allows us to colonize snow planets. I don't think there's any snow planet planets in our influence area. Oh, boy. Um, I'm kind of between xenology... Xeno xenology? And this one. I think we're going to do this one. Yeah, let's do that one. Done. Marketplace. Luxury prices increase. Decreasing tensions in the galaxy lead to a general increase in prices for luxury resources. Which, eventually... I think we should be able to buy a bunch of stuff in this screen? Yeah, the marketplace. But we haven't actually got the tech for it yet. But we'll eventually be able to buy a bunch, bunch of stuff eventually. But for right now, let's move our ships. We are going to combine these two fleets into one. We're going to merge them. And now that should cut down the time needed for the spreading of the vines. Which is all neat. You're going to go this way. Okay. Now we need this system to grow and we want this population on this place because it's fertile and this race gets more food on fertile planets so we're just going to go bloop you're going to take a trip over here and then we are going to make let's see plus per planet per cold per hot so there's a lot of cold planets in this place so that's going to be what 15 additional food Sounds good. Although that's really, that's really a long time. Okay, how about how about we do a, a more basic one? 
We'll start with this one first. And then maybe go to sustainable farms. But this is going to give us such a huge boost to farms. I think, if I'm reading that right. We are currently 81% happy, so we eventually could build, like, supermarkets on here. To get that approval rating up as high as we can go. Thanks for all the follows. And let's move our ships. Oh, you... Oh, that was... Okay. Okay. So I wonder, when we research the technology that allows us to skip using the space lanes, can then we can, like... I wonder if our vine ships can then just attract from a straight line. So, like, if we get a vine ship up here, then it would just be like, oh, we're just going to create our own space lane now. I wonder. Very curious. Oh, right. And we can also spread our population, which they already did automatically. And we kind of don't want them to do that. Because this is a sterile planet, and we will actually grow our system out faster if we have these people stay on this planet. Because we'll generate more food, which will then give us more population over here. We'll leave one person there, I guess. But, yeah. Alright. Okay, anything else? Let's check you. Seven turns. Nine turns. Wait, really? Nine turns? Did I just re-up this? No, it's only one turn. That... That is lying to me. That has to be a bug. That says nine turns remaining. That's not true. At least according to their screen here. Shit, then what is this actually? That's five turns. Okay, that's weird. For someone who's familiar with Stellaris, what's going on? I mean, I think this is a more basic game than Stellaris. So if you know Stellaris, you'll eventually just kind of know what's going on uh, right now we're playing a race that the only way they can colonize is by expanding giant tree branches through space which is what we're doing right here with these brown lines this is unique to this particular race of tree people and we need these unique ships called vine ships to actually do that so that's what we're doing right now when our vines which is represented again by these brown lines and they spread to a colony or to a system we can then instantly colonize any colonizable planets in that system most races have to build a colony ship, and then that colony ship has to build an outpost, then that outpost has to grow over time, and then eventually become a colony. But we skip that whole process just by expanding our influence in space. So that's what this is. And right now I'm just kind of exploring this entire map with our scout ship out here, finding what's out there. Um, this is an, a rival, or not really a rival, but this is a friendly uh, superpower because we made peace with them. And right now, we're just kind of playing a very peaceful, diplomatic game, because that's kind of what these tree people do. It's, their, it's like their thing, their play style. What was that? Technology stage unlocked in Empire Development Quadrant. Developing Empire Laws. Okay, so, for federations, democracies, and republics, we gain an additional law slot. I think we are... What are we, actually? I'm not sure what we are. We're democracy. So now we have an additional law slot that we can use here. And we got that because we unlocked this. Because now we're in the, to the Tier 3. So now we got that passive bonus for being in a Tier 3 of this particular um, Empire Development section of research. That's cool. Let's actually look at the laws again. Since we have two additional slots here. What do we got? Plus 20 approval per alliance on systems. So that means every single faction we have an alliance with, our entire empire gets plus 20 approval. And the same thing for peace. We have um, one peaceful faction, the Sofans, our neighbors. So this will grant us 10 additional approval per systems at the upkeep of two influence per person in our entire empire. So then we gotta be like, well, is 10 approval worth the less amount of influence we're gonna get? I don't think 10 approval is worth it quite yet. But if we were a bigger um, a bigger empire, then probably. But right now, the upkeep, I think, I don't know about that. Uh, let's see, plus 20% food generated per anomaly on colonized planets. I don't think we really need that. 
Uh, luxury resource deposits. Now, that's interesting, because we are about to colonize planets that have luxury resources. In fact, this one has two. Right? These are luxuries, right? It says average. Oh, wait, that's just how much it generates. There we go. So if you hover out here, yeah, these are both luxuries. So, we won't pass that law yet, but maybe we will pass that law soon. Because then we get more resources, and then we get more gold on the systems per luxury resource deposit at one influence per person. So we'll generate more, we'll generate 20% additional dust in that system. Interesting. Uh, this is more capacity and 10% food towards manpower on systems. I, I think that's a good thing. But I don't, I don't know if we want to pass that quite yet. Anyway, uh, we'll pass that other law here very soon. Let's move our ships. What was that? Oh, so uh, this is the Lumeris, which are the traitor faction. They are all about that dust and making dust. Okay. So we found one of their ships out here. But now we have first contact, so we can go in here and we'll be like, hey! Sometimes it's hard to tell your friends from your enemies, isn't it? It is. So we're gonna try and say, hey, do you want peace? Uh... And they're thinking... They don't want peace. What do you want for peace? Let's suggest terms. They want 110 dust and 45 of our manpower for a peace treaty. I'm cool with that. Because again, we get bonuses with alliances and having peaceful neighbors. So if I need to spend some money and manpower, and that's not per turn, right? That's just once. I imagine it would say per turn. Yeah, this has to be just a one-time thing. I'm cool with this, and we'll spend some influence to make this offer. They will probably accept it, since they're the ones who suggest the term. And there we go. Our families forgive us. Now we are peaceful, and now we are cordial. Great. That's all I wanted. Okay, research is now done. We still want to expand into Tier 3 so we can upgrade systems. I really want to see what that's like. So... Oops. What do we got up here? I think we need to research two or three of these to actually get to tier three. Miners Union. System improvement resource exploitation. Plus one resource generation on strategic resource deposits. And this unla unlocks the marketplace. Okay, what about this one? Generates more money per system. And allows us to buy out. Uh, this generates more dust per person on a planet with luxury deposits, which we are going to have one of those. And also unlocks planetary specialization dust. Hmm. Let's unlock the marketplace. Just so we have access to that. There we go. Oh, I was queuing up re researches. Whoops. Okay. Now we're just on that. Alright. It's hard to see it the way that the screen is laid out, but there we go. All right, you are going to continue exploring, and we're going to go back over here. And now I think we ha we should have a colonize or a specialization, right? Yes, the spin project. So this is going to generate one influence per person. We want more influence. We need all the influence, I think. So we're just going to queue both of those up. It doesn't cost an upkeep of anything. We just have to build it. And then we'll grant more influence. Okay. Speaking about influence, we got three turns left until we have to repraise them. And we need to repraise these guys right now. There we go. Okay. And has this been colonized? Do we have our tendrils here? No, we need one more turn? One more turn. All right. And then we can colonize the Gemini system. All right. What's Hyperium? Hyperium is a strategic resource that is mostly used to upgrade your ships with specific, like, cool weapons and, and defensive systems and things like that. Uh, same thing for Titanium. So any strategic deposit, I think, mostly goes into 
building your fleets, uh, your military, but there are also some buildings that will also require these strategic deposits, I think. As long as those were kept in the game. Again, it's been a long time since I played in this space too, and I know a lot of things have changed. So my information may be a little outdated. Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Oh, we wanted to end our turn, I think, right? Yeah. And there we go. Now we can come and I. What is this? You have unlocked a new population collection bonus. What? What is the collection bonus? What? Population overview. Oh! Oh, I didn't even know this was a thing. So now that we have the 10 population in our empire, what is what is that what does that do for us? Collection effect. The effects granted by collecting population units of this kind. So it just makes our political party stronger? I guess is what that does. Yeah, it does. Okay. And then at 20, we'll gain more influence on our systems with our specific race. Because you can't actually have different races within your systems. They can arrive just naturally or, you know, conquering. 50% ownership recovery rate on systems. I don't exactly know what that means. It must be good. Probably. And then we have a guardian. Oh, shit. Speaking of guardian, we have to research the guardian in the call system. By clicking on this. Oh, we need a ship in orbit to do this. The vine ships won't count. We would need our exploration ship, which is so far away. Shoot, I forgot about that. But we can re research these anomalies, or these curiosities, without the ship. But to get the Guardian, which is going to give us a passive approval bonus and a defensive bonus, we need a ship in orbit. Damn you. And again, vine ships don't count. Alright, well, let's go to the Janus system, spread our tendrils there. And now let's colonize Gemini. We will start with... What do we got up here? Aurora Waves. Plus 10 approval, but minus 2 research per person. And there's going to be technolo technologies later that we can research to get rid of the negative effects of that. While this is 10 approval and plus 3 food per person. I mean, we want to colonize both of them. We'll start with this. Uh, hello, Chicky Chief. Welcome. And hello to everybody else who I have missed. Sorry. I missed your hellos. Alright, so now we got a colony. Your empire lacks troops to fill your star systems and fleets. Okay, so since we're colonizing all these new systems, our manpower, which is the resource up here, is being drained faster than they can recover. That's okay. I think for right now, because we're not at war. If we were at war, that would probably be a problem. Also, if we needed to build ships, that would be a problem. Neither of which we need to do right now. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Eventually, the manpower will recover. Eventually. Hopefully. And now we're going to colonize this planet. Now be next turn. And now that we have this planet colonized... Oh, shit! The luxury resources are on an inhospitable one. No! <laughs> I can't even get the luxury resources! Alright, we need machine bacteria. I think you can do a search in this screen, right? Yeah. That's what we need to colonize that third planet. So after this tech, we're going to queue up this one. So that will go automatically next. Because I want those luxury resources starting to generate right now. Luxury resources are good. You can also sell them to the marketplace if you need dust. And stuff like that. So we definitely need this planet. Because both of those luxuries are on it. Because, it's, you know, F my life. Aren't you... Go! Move! What are you doing? Scout, you, you bastard. Hey, we've explored 20% of the galaxy. What else happened here? We have population gains on the Tikal system. 
Our hero leveled up. Okay, so what next do we want? Plus one industry per person and food per person. Or 10% food on system. Now we can also move this governor around. We don't need to keep them in the same system. If we don't want to. Plus two influence per person on planets. Oh man. So to get this, we'd have to research this technology, or this trait as well, which is, this is more of a fleet thing. But influence seems good. You know, for right now, let's just get a, a passive bonus like that. Apply. And again, he is the governor of the Xenia system. But we could move him if we wanted to. And I may want to soon. Yes, we have entwined Gemini. Indeed, we did that. Okay. Oh, okay, take care, Boomjaw. What is this? What? What are you? One ship of the Reavers? Is this like, this must be just like a neutral thing? What the hell is the Reaver? Scavenging pirates. Oh, son of a bitch. I was not expecting that. Okay. All of a sudden, I think we may need a military ship. Heart class. Exploration, small. Entwiner, small. Can we put weapons on this thing? Do we have weapons on this thing? Basic plasma beam. Ion torpedoes. Lasers. Kinetic. So we can only have one offensive system. And everything else has to be either defensive or support modules. Health bonus, repair ship after battle. Improved probe. I forgot about probes. Our, our ships can launch probes. We'll put basic armor and shielding in here. We'll give it more movement points. And... Health bonus. So we have an offensive power of 20, defensive of 83. And in this game, combat is a little... different. So there are three different ranges, and each gun type is effective or unaffected at um, different ranges here. Which we'll probably be seeing soon. And this ship needs 40 manpower. Okay, so now since we have pirates in our area, which I was not expecting. Oh boy. And we only have shit at a time where our manpower is really bad. Alright, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to pass some laws. We're going to pass the larger host bills so that more of our food is going to our manpower, because now we actually need man manpower now. Um, it takes no upkeep, so we're just going to pass this. We don't need that yet. And I still don't really want that. And we need to build this defender. Which is going to take some of our manpower, which, again, is really low right now. And our violent ships are going to go and run away from this pirate, because it most likely is going to try and attack us. It has an offensive rating of 22, defensive of 67. So one of our defender ships are is technically better, but I would like to get at least two in our fleet before we engage it. You come back up here and continue scouting. Also, who are these? 
I, I must have missed this message. We met the Pulsos. All right, praise them. Praise them all day, every day. You have eight turns remaining on that. One turn remaining on that, which we'll is refresher right now, so I don't forget. And something I'm missing. I don't think so. What is dense atmosphere? Plus two food per person. That's great. Yeah, I don't think I'm missing anything there either. All right. In turn. Show around the shipbuilder, please. Uh, there wasn't really much else to show. Okay, we unlocked the marketplace. And we're automatically going up to machine bacteria, which is what we wanted to do. Okay. Because with machine bacteria, we can then colonize this planet. Oh, cool. We also unlocked the ability to get stage three. Okay, so now we can upgrade our systems and see how that works. Okay, level two, modernization. The blueprint you create will make use of one of the luxury resources you have already discovered. You are free to choose which one you want to use. Each one will cause the blueprint to have a different effect. A new blueprint can only be created once per stage increase from stage 3 of the economy and trade quadrant of the technology tree. So you'll need to think carefully about your choice. You'll want to consider both your access to various luxury resources and the impact of the blueprint's effect on your systems. So right now when we level up a system, we're now leveling up with this luxury resource, which is going to give us more industry on the planets, which is something that we lack a little bit of. So I think I'm okay with this. And also it's the only resource we have. But once confirmed, there's no turning back until we level up to the next stage of that research tree, and then we can, I guess, add to it or change it. Uh, thanks for the follow. For right now, I'm okay with this. Now that the blueprint has been created, you can upgrade all your systems. For each system, you will need to add the system's development to the construction queue and ensure you have the necessary amount of... Uh... Okay, so we need 25 resources per system now. Okay, so we may need to make another trade with the Sofans. But, we can at least upgrade our home system. And we'll queue it up after the defenders. Neat. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh uh, yeah, but you guys are running. You, you just run. Immediately leave. Don't stay near those pirates. Uh, thank you for the follow. That ship is still doing its its thing. We move everything. And in turn. So soon here we'll show the combat. It's not something that you have a, a real direct approach to. It's kind of an indirect thing. You just kind of lay out the plans. New event, Riled Researchers. It appears that an intergalactic congress of scientists has turned into a labor dispute. They have come to the conclusion that their work is grossly underappreciated and plan to halt all experimental efforts until their wages improve, the lab equipment is upgraded, and their work reported more professionally. So we can ignore them, which will increase our industrialists, lower research and increase production for 15 turns, or we can increase research, lower dust in systems by 15 turns. Oh, but it says plus 30 research on systems and empire, but there's no turn associated with it. Is that forever? That can't be forever. Right? And also, minus 20 dust on systems and empire is probably eventually going to bankrupt us. Because we're only getting plus 31 right now. But I like this research, though. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we're at minus 29. But only for 15 turns. And since we have access to the marketplace, we can sell... The Hyperium that we're generating to get some money, right? We can sell this, right? Or is it only buy? No, I know you can sell it. Where's the sell button at? Of 
Purchasable items? No, we want saleable items. Here we go. So yeah, like, we can sell... There we go, we just sold a bunch of our Aperium off, and that, hopefully, we'll come back to that later. We just have to survive 15 turns without him. Or with this negative. You're pretty sure it's forever? Oh man, then yeah, that's definitely worth it. If that's forever, that's great. Alright, production on Gemini system. We want the basic stuff. Plus, okay, so fertile, planet, and temperate. We have no fertile, we have one temperate. So this will give us a plus 40. Because we have three planets, one of them is temperate. I think. Okay. Uh, but we'll put that later. Okay. Uh, where else can you go? There's no way we've explored everything. There's got to be more space highways. Oh, down here. Go down there. Alright, we have one defender up. We're going to wait for the second one before we send the fleet in. Cool, we got that. Very good, very good. What do they suggest here? System improvements, plus five approval per luxury resource deposit. Mm, okay. Uh, pre predictive logistics, system improvements, plus 20 industry per planet, and then a specialization, which will generate more per hot. Hmm. Plus four influence per system level, plus 20% influence. Can only be built once per empire. I mean, yeah. So that would generate 40 as a base. Oh no, uh, 80, because there would be system level 2. And then 20% on top of that. Hmm. Huh. Maybe we don't need that many, though. Also, maybe we should invest a little bit into military. Actually, let me take a look. Because it's the military that will unlock better hulls and equipment eventually. So. Let's do this. Because apparently that's something we need. Alright, so now we're going to have these two ships we're going to create. And we're going to send them after this dude. Who is moving... Where are you moving to? Oh, there's two of them now. Oh, shit. We want you to guard the system. So anything entering will now initiate a combat with us. I think. Fine ships come back. Everybody else move. We really need that. End the turn, please. There we go. That was fast. Let's see. System improvement defense. 750 damage done to attackers during ground battle. More manpower capacity. Planetary guard. And more support modules. Sure, if that's what you suggest, I'm down for that. Hey, they're now amicable. Okay, so now that should generate a better bonus. Yeah, we get more dust, more manpower, more science. Perfect. This is why being peaceful with all these minor nations are great. Okay, and there we go. So now we want to... Why didn't we initiate combat automatically? Are they not considered aggressive? 
Holy shit, that one's actually stronger than the other one. Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna decide... I think there's three different phases in combat, and we need to try and decide what to use. I don't know, like, I never really liked the combat in, in these games. Advanced battle set up your battle, command HQ. Here you will manage your fleet, select your tactics, and hopefully outfox your opponent. First off, it's always good to know the physical effects of the theater where the battle is taking place. Some things like the asteroid fields can make a huge difference to your strategy. Once you establish the effects of the theater, the next thing to do is to analyze your fleet strengths and weaknesses against your enemies. Like, this is a unique combat system, but it's just not one I, I like because you don't take direct control. You're just like, hey, do this, and hopefully it all goes well. Balance of projectile damage between two opposing feats. So we have a higher projectile. Okay. So it looks like we are more effective short range. The enemy is more effective long range. So you want to try and force a short-range battle? Um, I guess we go with the turtle. Together these tactics compose your tactics set. To determine the optimal tactics, you're going to need to take account of all the intel. Fleet statistics, theater effects, and more crucially the intel. As you can see, altering tactics changes your ship's trajectories. Does it? I guess it does. Um, which in turn will likely alter the distance between your ships and the enemies. This is vital, remember, because each weapon has an optimal range, which can be most effective. So we probably want to go forward. Because our both of our ships are in here. Which I don't think yeah, we, I don't think we can change that right now. And we want them to get as close to the enemy as possible, which is over here. Okay. Uh, note that the flotilla composition elements are only relevant when your fleet has five or more command points, CP. For now, all your ships are grouped into a single central flotilla, and only the middle row of the chosen tactics applies. And so now, like, the battle just kind of takes place, and we just, we can watch it, but we can't affect it when it's actually going on. And that, I just, I never liked this system. Again, it's unique. But, eh. Do you think the trees use phones? Oh yeah, of course. They have uh, the, the best wireless technology for phones. Alright, so one of our ships has taken some damage. They've taken some damage as well. You can see the little heart icon there. I'm assuming this is like a balance of power bar. We have them down to half health. They've done 600 damage almost to one of us. Yep. 
kind of sit back and pull out my phone, check our messages. It was a draw. Uh, victorious or defeated, the fighting is over. Ships that have survived the battle will gain experience, perhaps even level up. Ships that didn't make it, well, all that remains of them is a uh, hundred thousand pieces of plans, metal and bones tumbling through space. I uh, see this is kind of why I like Endless Legends better, because it's an actual tactical battle um, that you control a lot more directly. But in the space. Oh, cancel. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but we gained some experience. We lost some health. They're almost dead. We could rewatch it if you want to. I'm not going to click that. And then we'll hit done. Um, this little symbol here with the little, like, thicker blips and the smaller blips, uh, that's showing that we are, I believe, currently defending this system. We could repair these ships for some dust. I don't think we really need to do that. Unfortunately, we can't attack again. This turn, we'll have to wait. But yeah, I'm not going to repair our, our fleets quite yet. Um, let's move the rest of our fleets. That's in construction. Okay, we'll just let that finish. Are there space stations? I don't believe there are space stations. You can build improvements on your planets that are like defensive installations and things like that, but space stations? I don't think so. Um, what is this? Oh, cool. Okay. So we're researching this one, right? What else do we have? Command points. So command points are how you get bigger fleets. So that's always a good thing for offensive stuff. Uh, this also unlocks armored units for ground battles. So yeah, that's something I haven't really shown quite yet. But in every system, we can click on... Oh, we have a spaceport now. Wait, I'm sorry, what? All level 2 systems automatically benefit from a spaceport that allows you to send population to other systems of your empire. Oh. Oh, really? Okay. Um, that's cool. Let's send them to Gemini. That's neat. Interesting. Uh, anyway, if you click on this, where is it? There should be a button that shows you... Maybe not. There's a manpower... Oh, it's, it's in here. So, manpower screen. So, right now, all of our troops are infantry, but we can manage that. And you can actually... This is kind of cool. You can upgrade your different types. So, infantry, armored, and air. I guess our armored are just giant armor trees. Uh, but we can spend some dust to increase the infantry health of our Empire forces, if we want to. Um, I'm assuming when we unlock armor, we can then purchase some armored stuff. So this is a little more involved than it used to be. So that's neat. It's neat. Anyway. Um, let's end the turn. We'll try and finish off that enemy fleet. What is this? Oh, that's our, those are our people there who are leaving the system. Oh, okay, cool. Also, this person is running, so we're just going to move over here and we will wait for them here. And we'll do defend. 
Uh, this way we're going to prevent them from immediately leaving the system and so we can finish them off. Move all of our ships. And right now we're going to combine these two fleets together. Which we can do. Uh, because this is the CP, so right now one of our fleets is using only two. This one's using three, I think. Can we merge these? Yeah. Uh, this way, I, I think when this dude enters the orbit, they could, in theory, attack a specific fleet. And they probably would attack the vine ships and destroy them. So this way we're going to try and protect the vine ships. I think that's how it works. And then next turn, I'll separate these fleets and then attack with the defenders. Let's check on our praise. Praise is still going strong. We'll just re-up this. Um, let's go and talk to Welcome. you again. Welcome. How can Do you want a map share? Help? They have antimatter. That's like a whole nother level. They are cool with this. Probably because we've explored more of the galaxy than they have. But we want to do this because they may have um, discovered more minor races that we want to just kind of cozy up to and get some passive bonuses from. So I'm going to be like, hey, that's cool. Um, but we could probably get more out of this deal because they already like it. So what if you were to give me... You have... Oh my god, they have so much stuff. I don't care about that. That's always great. Mm -hmm. They're probably not going to be... Oh, it's only five? We only have five of them? Yeah, they don't like that. Trade agreements. Uh, will trace routes between all of your HQs and the other player's subsidiaries, and vice versa. Trade routes cannot cross enemy systems and can be interrupted by war blockades, etc. Uh, we don't have any HQs. Those are trade HQs, which we haven't delved into yet, so there's really no point in doing a trade agreement, I think. We'll just make this offer. And they should probably accept. They accepted... Yes, because now we know where the Academy is, which is apparently, they found that out too. We've discovered uh, Planet Horatio Prime. This is the planet of the clone people. We've uncovered Pilgrims, who we're about to cozy up to. Oh, but they like, they like the Lumeris. Oh, they're allied to the Lumeris. I wonder if we can cozy up to them. First contact, praise. We'll try. The Haroshims, who apparently- God, you're already allied to them too? What the fuck? How? Discovered the Lumeris home planet? Not just a deal. And there we go. They're like, yeah, we accept. So we kind of got some good stuff out of that. So now we all we see all this stuff. I wonder if we can take the alliance away from them. I have no idea if you can do that or not. But that'd be interesting if you can. Okay, well... More stuff that we discovered. And construction stuff. Alright, in turn. Okay. System improvement defense. Manpower stuff. Planetary guard. More manpower stuff. Okay. Uh oh. On some of your systems, an antiquated classification scheme used to categorize minor civilization citizens has a religious community up in arms. The classification system is mostly meaningless at this point, but no official accede to the protest protesters' demands would be a small bureaucratic nightmare. So we get minus 10 approval and increase scientists, or we will increase religious political parties and lower industry on colonies on the empire.
Ah! Oh, the, it, it okay, it automatically happened. Shit. I was hoping to split my... Hmm. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Skip to action. Intense action! Hopefully they are not taking out my vine shields. Actually, the, the vine ships are pretty tanky. They have a ton of hit points. Alright, we killed him. We got experience. Rewatch it? Nah, it's fine. Okay. Now, we are going to separate them back. And the defenders are going to go back here. And they're going to research the guardian. And then we'll take care of this other pirate at some point. And I'm not going to pay for the repairs because we're still losing money. Um... I'm assuming at higher tiers we unlock better halls. Where's some halls at? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, let's grab that so we can build tanks. Tree tanks. The best kind of tanks. Also colonize that. I meant to do that a while ago, I kind of forgot. And colonize that. Oh, right, uh, you're here. Okay, so let's go back into the call. And now we want to research the Guardian. Can we do that? Wait, what? Oh shit. They don't have the right modules for it. Shit. Really? Okay. Alright, well, we'll send this ship all the way back home, that's fine. And then they can research the Guardian. You guys are coming up here. And you're spreading vines. Uh, I just, I just moved you. Please move. There we go. Enter. Balls are on the left. Red ship icons. Oh, okay. Fish and shielding? Alright. Hey, more stuff from you. Retreat. We took some losses. Well, if it isn't our favorite empire, up to their usual japes. Foreign outpost created on entwined system Jan Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Colonizing my territory. Also, these guys are blockading me. Uh, I'm not gonna watch this. Just kill them. Of 
course it was a draw. Of course it was a draw. Gosh dang. Okay. In turn. Hey, cordial. Bye. Finish him off. And there we go, they're dead. So now let me send these two. Disband and put into the hangar. Move our ships. Man, I cannot believe they took this planet from me. Oh, that's so upsetting, man. Okay, so I see what you're talking about. Alright, so we got Empire Development as the ship falls. Understood. I assume they would be under military. I guess not. Let's just grab efficient shielding then. Military Stage 3. What does this do? Be the first to raise one of your heroes to level 9. And we'll gain some strategic resources. Okie dokie. Colonization. That just really upsets me, like, really, like, a lot. I wanted to be friends. And now... High five! Yeah, that's how we roll. Oh, shut up. Man. I couldn't we be friends and you respect my territory? God. You know, fine then. I'm just going to entwine my way through their territory then. Although that could be bad. If we go to war. Fleet still costs upkeep in the hangar? Oh, I thought they'd lower their upkeep. What the hell is the point of keeping them in a hangar? Is it just to heal them then? I thought it was also a, a lower cost on their upkeep. Well, at least it healed them. At the very least, I guess. I guess. Wait. Oh, because we're in the process of, of colonizing it. Right, okay. I was like, why can't I hit click the colonize button? Don't mind me. Do you want to transfer more people? I think we do. And we will send you to the to call system this time. But yeah, I'm about to entwine like all up their little stupid faces. God, the music's so good in these games. Uh, you can't colonize the other planet in the system? I can. We just have to wait for it to be entwined. You can see we're not entwined yet. If it's only an outpost, you can still beat them to colonizing it, but they won't be happy. Oh, so I can cancel their outposts. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, we're about to do that. They can be upset all they want. That's my system. I see they have 27 turns, so... Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, you are about to get forested. Suck it. Oh, shit. Alright. Create. They, again, at least they healed up. Move down. And we're going to blockade, so they're forced to combat. Blockade. Or defend. What is this? Unknown Empire. Well, let's meet them. Is that the Eratia? How are they still unknown? This isn't pirates, right? If it's an actual says Empire?
Hmm, weird. But okay. Uh, what else do we want to do? This is being colonized, right? Yeah, next turn. I don't think we have any new laws quite yet, but we can still pass another one. Oh yeah, approval. What's the approval like in our other systems? 98%. I think we can check on it through this screen, right? They're all great. Like, we don't need any more approval. We're all a happy tree people. So we don't need that. We can grab this and get some extra dust, I guess. Now that we're going to colonize the, the luxury planet. But it is going to cost us... How many people are in our empire? What do we got? 18? So it's going to cost us 18 influence for that? That's kind of steep. I may still hold off on that. 